it's feeling a little cold in here. So I'm gonna go over here, turn up my heat, set on 71. If you wanna be able to do that and not feel guilty about it, watch this video and we'll show you how you can do it too. Just watch the full video. All right, in this video, guys, we're gonna be putting a heat exchanger in here in, in our furnace, in our plenum. We have it measured up right here. We're gonna be sticking to that. This is the heat exchanger that we're gonna be putting in. It has two one-inch openings. Stay with us and we'll show you how it's done. What we're gonna do first is mark the plenum here for the size that needs cut out so the heat exchanger will fit in there. So we're marking that with a permanent marker so we can see it. Then uh, what we did is cut the exhaust off for the, this is a gas furnace. Cut that off because it was gonna be in the way for everything to slide in and then I had to redo that. So we used a small drill bit first. It just made it a little bit easier and then we went to a bigger one. You'll see in the next video the hole's a little bit bigger before he starts cutting it. That way you can get in there a little bit easier with the tin snips on all four corners. Make your cuts. Do be careful because the metal, that sheet metal, is very, very sharp when you cut that off. So we was kind of had our arms in here later in the video, you'll see. Just be very careful with it because it will cut you very quickly. All right, we have the hole cut here in the duct work or the plate in the plenum is what they call it sometimes. The heat exchanger slides in here, but what we're going to do is we have some brack, some angle iron we're going to put in here that it will rest on because if not, there's nothing in here to hold it. So we're going to put some in here. We'll drill some holes, run some screws through it, fasten it to each side of this. Then we will slide that in and it will have something to sit on like this. And then we'll hook everything else up after that. All right, now when you look in here, you can see what I'm talking about. We have some just like one inch angle iron. We just measured the depth of it. It doesn't even have to be the full length. This actually ended up being a little bit shorter because you don't have to have every from front to back cover with the angle iron. You want most of it. This one is, I think it was 19. This here was a 36 inch piece. So we just cut it in half so I didn't have to use both pieces. But anyways, you can see the three heads. There's one, there's two, and there's the third one. Put three on each side two, three, and uh, that's all there is. I'll take this heat exchanger, and then it will just slide in just like that. Like a glove. Almost like we tried to do it. And here's your two caps. We'll pull these off here in a minute. We'll hook our lines which are right here they run up over out to the boiler system and then one of these i don't think it matters i'll look and see in a minute but i don't think it matters which one's which or in or out out in however you want to do it doesn't matter just as long as you have one coming in the other one to go out all right so once it's slid in you can see there's a little bit of gap here you see there's a little bit of gap let me see if it there you go a little bit of gap right in there so what you want to get you want to get some aluminum duct tape, you can buy this at your hardware store. It actually is aluminum, so be very careful when you're getting it off. It's got tape on the back. Sticky on the back. Just be careful because it will cut you. Alright, so now the heat exchanger's in. We've taped it all up with the aluminum tape. All the way around. You want to make sure you get all your holes so you're not losing any air, any heat. And now all we got left to do is take these caps off. Like I said, we have our two lines down here. We'll run these up, connect them, and then we'll connect them out there on the furnace. Now it's time for the hookup. Guys, I will say this is one inch PEX. It is very rigid, very stiff. So, I mean, you got, you got to put a little oomph into it to get it to go where you want it to go. So do make sure you leave yourself enough slack. We're using these push-on shark bite fittings. They work great. I mean, they haven't leaked, nothing, and you see how easy it was to push it on there. And you'll see here, has you kind of got to get, you know, contorted around a little bit, but uh, I mean, it, it's gonna, when it slides on there, it's gonna go and lock on, and it has not leaked at all. 
All right, here's the finished product. We have the heat exchanger in, we have it taped. We have our shark bite 90 degree elbow on here, connects onto your copper here and here, connect onto your cold. So the way we have this set up is this will be our hot, obviously blue and, blue and red. You don't have to do it. You can use white, whichever, but this way it makes it easier when you're hooking up in here and you're hooking up out there, you know which one. This will be the feed, this will be the hot coming in and the code going out. I say code, it won't be cold water, it'll just be colder than this water because this is gonna be coming straight from the boiler. This will be going back, pumped out there to get reheated, recirculated, and come back in as new hot water. So that's all there is to hooking this part up. Stay tuned for some of the other videos and we will show you guys the other aspects of it. Guys, I hope you liked this video. I hope it was informative for you, that you learned something if you're uh, thinking about doing this possibly, or even if you're just kind of curious of how they work. This shows you how they do work, how they can save you money. You gotta have wood, but I mean, if you have access to wood, this is actually, and don't mind putting in a little bit of work, it's really not a bad way to go. So if you would guys, subscribe to the channel, share the videos, check out some of my other videos I have. You know, if you would hit that, uh, little bell icon that way anytime I put new stuff out you can see it you can watch it you don't learn something maybe you don't you're not gonna do it yourself but you can always learn something it's always nice to be able to know how to do something somebody's talking at least you have an insight of to what's going on guys as always why hire a guy when you can DIY thanks for watching